So we are following breaking news right now. There is a Fulton County Board of Election. The head of the county is now speaking. Let's listen in. Um, there will be um, a lot of room for improvement when it comes to uh, August and also November. We're going to bring in a, a consultant. We, the board and I have been talking about that for a couple of weeks uh, since the since early on in the during early voting. And I think that's going to be the best thing to do, especially when it comes to ballot by mail. Um, right now, I guess the best thing to do since you got the statement that we released earlier is I'm just going to take take a few questions until I need to go over to Georgia World Congress Center and then to the Election Preparation Center. Uh, thank you, Mr. Barron, um, and thank you everyone again for your flexibility. Um, if you just want to type in the comments, I will call on people in order and let, um, let Rick take a few questions. Um, and we will um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, if, you know, and if there's someone who, um, I think you all can unmute yourselves. I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, one thing I'd like to clarify, because I've had a few questions about it, um, is ask Rick to clarify which ballots are being counted at which location. Um, I think many of you have visited us at the Georgia World Congress Center where we are counting absentee ballots. That is not where everything is being counted. So I'm just going to ask him while we're getting, um, while folks are, you know, if you have any questions to ask, ask Rick to just comment on that. Yes, at the Wor Georgia World Congress Center, we are counting all of the absentee ballots that we received. Uh, through Sunday, we had received over 85,000. And then I believe today we received another, we received mail on Sunday, two different times from the Postal Service. So yesterday we didn't get any mail. And then today we received another more than almost 7,500. We will get ballots from the drop boxes tonight. Those were open until nine o'clock once the poll hours were extended. And at the election preparation center, all of the early votes will be tabulated. The votes actually for the absentee ballots by mail will be tabulated at the uh, election preparation center on English Street. However, they are all scanned and processed over at Georgia World Congress Center. That is a very big operation over there. In case if any of you have been over there, you'll see that there are more than 220 people at work over there to processing the over 90,000 absentee ballots that we received. Just to give you an idea of the difference between this primary this year, which is the, the the general primary, we've received over 92,000 absentee ballots by mail. In the 2016 general primary, we only received 947 ballots. Okay, I can take questions. All right, uh, thank you, Rick. Um, we have a question from Ben Brash um, at AJC. And um, Ben, you can unmute yourself, but I'm just going to go ahead and read it. He said, what exactly went wrong today, aside from backlog and new equipment? What specific things happened? And if there were multiples, please elaborate. I think there were several things today that uh, we can learn from. For uh, We had a number of poll workers that didn't show up in, in many precincts. And that is something that we feared uh, that would happen. We had uh, even two poll managers in the last couple of days that tested positive for COVID, so they couldn't work. Uh, I think they're, they're the, one of the big challenges for us was that we had 45 polling place changes. That's something usually you won't see uh, unless you're in a two-year cycle. You might see that many polling place changes over that time period. What that, the challenges of that is that we had to get, a lot of them happened, uh, 44 of the 45 were directly due to COVID. We had to get out ahead of household mailing to announce those changes. We had to try to get those publicized out there in any way that we could, from next door through elected officials. And we had to make sure that voters knew where the new polling places 
uh, where their new polling places were because if you vote in your pre in you vote anywhere other than your assigned precinct on election day, you have to vote a provisional ballot. That is one thing that happened at, at, at precincts around the county today because many people were confused by all of the different polling place changes. We don't like to change polling places, but in, in the middle of this pandemic, we were faced with one polling place after another dropping out, and we went dropped from 198 polling places down to 164. We were able to combine a number, and so that's why that the 45 that changed reduced our polling location numbers down to 34. We also uh, lost a lot of poll workers. We had a lot of new poll workers in the field today. One of the other things that, that happened was that this was brand new equipment. The last time the poll workers were trained for the March presidential preference primary between January and March. Their in-person training was, was in those months. Be, at, since then, we haven't been able to do in-person training. The, that we did some refreshers in the last few days, but the but people did not want to attend in-person training at the height of the, the concern over the pandemic in in March, April, and in into May. We would have lost more poll workers had we done in-person training because people weren't comfortable with it. That was another challenge that we had. So we had to do video training, we had to do webinars. And then we did demos during supply pickup. And we also did for those poll workers that were interested in coming in, in person, we did do trainings that way. So what that did by, by having all of those trainings occur is uh, through video is you, you don't get your hands on the equipment. So a lot of poll workers were confused this morning in many different precincts about several different things. Our call center was overloaded with, with calls from, from poll workers that had issues. How many precincts and all had issues? I don't mean to interrupt. How many that precincts ranged had issues? all the way across the, uh, the spectrum. I think some of the other things, we did have equipment issues. We had scanners that, that uh, would power down, jammed. We also had uh, in some cases, polling or uh, ballot marking devices plugged into the uh, one circuit. Maybe there were too many pull in, plugged into one circuit. And so that would cause some of them to flicker. We were having to get technicians out there. We had more than 90 technicians hired for this election that were either roving around or assigned to, to specific precincts. And those are some of the issues that we saw. It was mostly, uh, mostly equipment issues, many caused by uh, different training challenges that we had. Thank you, Rick, for that. Um, ben, um, hopefully we answered your questions. Um, next question we have is, um, from WABE, a closer look wants to know, um, Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger says it's Fulton County's fault, is it? I'm not sure what that means. Um, follow up question from WABE, Secretary of State says he's investigating Fulton County. Have we heard from him directly? And will, um, Rick wants to know, will you cooperate with an investigation? We haven't heard from the Secretary of State directly, no. Whenever a county is investigated, whenever a, an investigation of a county opens up, whenever a voter initiates a complaint with the Secretary of State's office, the Secretary of State's office has a team of investigators. They, they investigate every complaint that comes in. So whenever a, the first complaint comes in, an investigation is opened. It, it is, uh, terminology that is used by the Secretary of State's office, whether it is, look, all I'm doing is looking forward to, to finishing the job of this election and looking forward to seeing what we can do better going forward. Uh, whatever Secretary Raffensperger's opinion is, it's his opinion, it's his opinion alone, and he can say, say whatever he wants. I disagree with him. I think he's the the head election official in the state and he can't wash his hands of all the responsibility for this election. So that's 
pretty much where I'll leave that question. Uh, thank you, Rick. Um, next question from Ben again, uh, who wants to know how this um, today's events, I guess, fit into the history of Fulton County's election hiccups, or is this something different? Well, I think it's, uh, I think it's a little both. I mean, we've obviously this election posed some problems for us that uh, no other election, I think 2012, we haven't seen anything like this since 2012 in terms of issues on election day. And, you know, it's, it's not uncommon to have uh, a few precincts here and there have issues, but this, um, this hit us on in many different fronts uh, from absentee by mail to to uh, election day during early voting. We had to reduce the number of early voting sites that we had. We had a, about a, we had processed more than 143,000 absentee ballot applications. That is three, four, four times or four and a half times the amount of a normal presidential election. It was, it, it stretched us thin as far as staffing goes. Uh, we got behind, of course, in April with uh, the head of the absentee ballot coming down with COVID and then one of his chief um, staff members dying from COVID. So we got we got behind in April. Uh, we had six of the first nine days where we were processing that we, when we got behind and that set us off on the wrong foot. It took us a long time to catch up, but we did. And... Um, you know, what I want to do is thank all the voters that did participate in this election. We are going to look exactly at what everything that happened in this election and go forward. And we will make sure that in November we serve the voters of this county uh, with distinction. Uh, thank you, Rick. Um, next question is, um, what would you say to voters who may be worried about um, November? Well, I think what we're going to have to do for November is regardless of where we are in terms of the pandemic, we are going to have to open all of our early voting sites. Uh, if we need to open 24 early voting sites and have another 15 outreach sites, we're just going to have to do that to take the pressure off of election day and also take the pressure off of the absentee by mail process. That the absentee by mail process, it was an election in and of itself. Uh, you know, you have in, you have states out there in the West that do ballot by mail professionally. That is what they do. Their elections are almost exclusively by mail. They have no polling sites. They they have no early voting. They do it by mail. What we were asked to do was do absentee by mail. We became an absentee by mail state. We still had to do our full complement of election day infrastructure. We did our early voting infrastructure and it stretched us. We, we tried to face those challenges. And I think, you know, when you have the, the offices that are closed, you have, you're managing people teleworking from homes all over the county. We ran into a lot of a lot of challenges this time, so I think um, we are going to learn from this and move forward. Uh, thank you, Rick. I think we're going to take like, um, one or two more questions. Um, we have one here from Faith says, "Is it true that Georgia's absentee ballots were processed and mailed by Runbeck from Arizona, as contracted by the Secretary of State on April 25th, and the counties were only responsible for processing the applications and not mailing them until last week?" Yeah, Joe. Uh yeah, the Secretary of State's office, the, the, what the process was, was that the Secretary of State's office mailed out the absentee ballot applications to voters originally. Now, I, I don't know in, to which, which counties, the voters in each county received their, their applications at different times. I don't know where Fulton was with regard to that order and when our voters received those applications in comparison to others, but I know that on that sometime around April 6th, uh, April 5th, April 6th, a lot of Fulton voters started receiving their absentee ballot applications in the mail. The, the, 
Voters would then send them by email to us or send them through mail. The vast majority of them came, came via mail. Then once we processed them, run back out of Arizona would mail those. We had, they started mailing them on April 21st and they, the last processing day for, for the counties was May 28th. So any, and then whatever was processed on May 28th Runbeck would then mail, and I think they got the last of those out on either 6-1 or 6-2. The counties then took over mailing from the applications they started receiving on May 29th and then mailed out the, the final week. And so we were, excuse me, we were responsible for the last week to mail out those ballots. All right, we have been listening to Richard Barron. He is with the Fulton County Board of Elections uh, admitting today, Sean, that mistakes were made. He said, we're going to learn from our mistakes. We're going to move on. He talked about a number of different measures that they plan to put in place before the general election in November. One of them includes hiring a consultant to come in and try to help out. He also talked about opening up more early voting locations so that people who want to vote early, and there seemed to be a lot of interest in that this cycle, uh, will be able to do that in more locations. There were a lot of concerns, especially on social media and even coming from Fair Fight Georgia, which is Stacey Abrams' organization, uh, including uh, former mayor Kasim Reed, uh, our, all, our current mayor, uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, that there were possibly, with, on social media, this could have been a result of suppression. Um, but according to the Fulton County Board of Elections top head, he admits that there were some serious issues that, that this election, this primary election, stressed us. It really hit them from many different fronts. For, for example, the board confirms that there were training challenges that created voting delays. Two poll managers did not show up for election today because they tested positive for COVID-19. 44 of the 45 polling places in Fulton County were changed because uh, poll workers had to train via uh, video and they couldn't train in person. So that's why some of them were not adept on how to work the uh, voting machines. And also there were, the, the reason why they had to train by video is because there were concerns about COVID-19. Uh, also the numbers, the sheer numbers of people, this unprecedented turnout. Uh, Richard Barron says over 92,000 absentee ballots were received by Fulton County compared to 947 that were processed back in 2016.